Ah, and we are live. Welcome back to Takes by Fans. We got a great show for you today. As always, we are live every single day at noon Eastern. If you want to watch live, head over to takesbyfans.com slash watch. If you want to watch but not live, head over to our YouTube channel, Takes by Fans. We post all of our shows and clips of the show there on a daily basis. And if you just want to listen, we are on podcasting apps, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, iHeartRadio. So, however you want to watch or listen we've got you covered multiple ways all right today's a big old friday folks week 13 in the nfl just kicked off last night with the cowboys at the saints we hit again back to back thursday night game hits baby and we are three for three in our last three bets uh nba two days ago we went two for two and then the game last night so folks our finger is on the pulse which is great because we've got our official week 13 picks so bet whatever you want on these because all six of our picks will hit we have our finger on the pulse and that's what we try to do every single season folks try to figure out the season so we can make money obviously the earlier that we can do that the better so we can make more money but there's still what six seven weeks here in the NFL that we can still make real solid money on so that's what we've got today folks our week 13 official picks our three locks our three 99 percent guarantees We've got our NBA Daily 10. Uh, talk about what happened yesterday in the NBA. we got to break down the game. Cowboys at the Saints. A lot of people are, you know, knocking Taysom Hill. And that, I, I don't not disagree, but I, I, I think it's a little um, a little unwarranted, just a tad. We'll talk all that through. And then once again, we got a little surprise on the show, folks. Uh, more Panini NFT packs dropped today. Uh, we're officially done buying them after today because it's done. The platform's dead, but we're still trying to maybe get a number one or a Mac Jones or something. So uh, we'll open some cards as well today on the show. But uh, let's start the let's start the damn thing, right? Start the damn show. Start the damn show. Uh, so here we go. Let's put 10 minutes on the clock here. Uh, get to the clock. Here we go. All right. 10 minutes on the clock. Next 10 minutes, uninterrupted basketball talk of what just happened yesterday in the NBA. 10 minutes on the clock in the 10 minutes start right now. Alrighty, just a handful of games in the NBA on last night. So let's start here with the first one up. Bulls at the Knicks, and the Bulls come away with a four-point victory here, winning 119 to 115 over the Knicks. Alrighty, for the Bulls, the big four is all good still, so that's great. DeMar DeRozan, 34.6 rebounds, 3 assists. They moved DeMar DeRozan to the 3 for this game. Javante Green plays the 4. So DeMar DeRozan, I mean, you know, playing the three, playing the four, it doesn't really matter. He's getting great production. I mean, 34.6 rebounds on 63% shooting. Absolutely fantastic. Vucevic down low, 27.7 rebounds and three assists. Lonzo Ball playing the two. Zach Levine playing the one. See what Lonzo Ball has done, folks. He wants to take all these shots. He took 14 shots. You know, this is kind of why we don't love Lonzo Ball 100%. We think he's a little bit too happy shooting the ball and they move him to the two to kind of give him a green light to start shooting the ball so then you take kind of shots away from Zach Levine a little bit because Zach Levine has to slide over to the one so don't love it it got the win barely though okay so Lonzo Ball eight points on 21 percent shooting on 14 shots stop it stop it be a pure point guard please and just let the shots come to you naturally 14 shots here he took 10 threes that's what we don't want Lonzo Ball doing. I've got no problem with LaMelo taking those shots. I like LaMelo as a better score. I like LaMelo Ball better than Lonzo Ball, folks. Unapologetic. I do not care. Uh, Lonzo Ball... He's good, don't get me wrong, but I believe his brother, LaMelo Ball, is a better passer and a better scorer, and his passing is better because it's a little bit more, um, I don't want to call it flashy, but it's like uplifting, it's energetic, it's great passing, it uh, really um, just kind of bolsters the entire team around him with the way he can kind of pass in the excitement that comes around the kind of flashiness passes that LaMelo Ball does 
passes. I don't see Lonzo Ball really doing that. So don't really love Lonzo Ball that much. And here he is, a minus nine on the floor, the worst of the starters. Not great. Jacking up 14 shots on 21% shooting. I don't love it, folks. Don't love it. Zach Levine at the one, 27 points, five assists, seven rebounds. He played very well. Uh, a plus seven on the floor, fantastic. Uh, 50% shooting on 18 shots. We'll take that three of six from the three. Nothing great off the bench here. Derek Jones Jr. only playing 14 minutes, six points. He shot 100%, which is great. Usually pretty efficient when he comes off the bench. Um, and then Alex Caruso off the bench, six points. He had four steals, six assists, and six rebounds. And the man played 30 minutes and was plus 21 on the floor. The highest by far, folks, plus minus for the Bulls. So Bulls end up getting the win here. And then the Knicks, what happened here? Still, obviously, no Kemba Walker. Uh, Emmanuel quickly still playing the one, 15 points, three assists, three rebounds. He shot 35%. We had Alec Burks at the two, 16 points, seven rebounds. Mitch Robinson at the 5, 9 points, 8 rebounds. Julius Randle, 30 points, 12 rebounds, 6 assists. A great night by him. And then Evan Fournier, 16 points. He shot 42% on 14 shots, 4 of 10 from the 3. Not bad. Pretty solid overall. And then Derrick Rose off the bench, 16 points, 6 assists. Fantastic. Unfortunately, not enough to beat the Bulls. Once again, the Knicks struggling to beat the kind of topper tier teams. Uh, they're very solid tier 2, maybe top of the tier 2 teams. Don't know if they're kind of tier Year one just quite yet. Bulls get the win, 119-115. Alrighty, next game up here is the Bucks and the Raptors, and the Raptors win. They beat the Bucks, but there was no Giannis last night, so we're not going to take this game and weigh it any really at all. It's a it's a win for the Raptors. I don't know if I can call it a good win. It's good that the Raptors got back on track winning. We've wanted to see that, so I guess we can give them a little credit for that. So the Raptors get the win here, 97-93. Who got it done for the Raptors? Well, Gary Trent Jr. was back in the starting lineup here. Thank goodness, missed the last couple of games, uh, but he didn't have a great game overall. Eight points on 18% shooting, two of 10 from three, 18% on 16 shots. Not great, but he did have eight rebounds and was a plus five on the floor so we give him a little credit Fred Van Vliet, 29 points, 4 assists, 5 rebounds. Very well done. Pascal Siakam, 20 points, 4 assists, 8 rebounds. Very well done. And then Scotty Barnes, 13 points, 7 rebounds, 4 assists, 3 steals. Once again, give credit to the rookie. And then for this Bucks team, well, Pat Connaughton fills in for Giannis at the 4. And he does not even look like Giannis, obviously. Uh, 7 points, 3 rebounds. Giannis doesn't do that. What do you what are you, nuts? If Giannis ever scores seven points and three rebounds, he may need to put the man down because his career is probably over at that point. Uh, Bobby Port is still playing the five here. Still no Brooke Lopez, 15 points, 11 rebounds. Chris Middleton, 22 points, eight rebounds. And once again, we just really needed Chris Middleton to step up this game. Whenever Giannis is not playing, it it is Chris Middleton's job 100% to carry the load offensively. Only 22 points. He wasn't even the leading scorer of the squad. That was Drew Holiday with 26 points and eight assists and six rebounds. Very well done by Drew Holiday last night and also shot 52%. But Chris Middleton shooting 40% on 20 shots, only 22 points. Just a little bit more out of Chris Middleton, please. He got it done in the playoffs last season, folks. He absolutely came alive in the playoffs last year. But in the regular season, it's just nothing great. We need this man to be a really solid, more solid, more consistent number two for this Bucks team. We'll see how he does once they get to the playoffs, if he can turn it right back on. Uh, Grayson Allen, 10 points. He shot two of six from the three, 40% on 10 shots. An all right game. He was still a plus eight on the floor in 32 minutes. We'll give him a little bit of credit as well. Um, and then just nothing great off the bench because once again, Pat Conifton, you know, you got to bring him up and you've already had to bring Bobby Portis off the bench here. So without Giannis, the bench shrinks a little bit and that's kind of what their downfall was a little bit last night. So Raptors get back on track, 97-93. No Giannis last night. We're not going to be weighing that loss too heavy for the Grizzlies. Um, <laughs> all righty, folks. And that was... This game. Are y'all ready for this game? Jeez Louise. Uh, Thunder, at, Thunder at the Grizzlies, folks. Thunder at the Grizzlies. Grizzlies win 152 to 79. 152 to 79. That is a 73 point loss. An NBA record loss here by the Thunder. We know this team is absolutely garbage. Lugans Dort, he led the team in scoring with 15 points. He was a minus 53 on the. 
<laughs> a minus 53 on the floor, folks. If you ever utter those words, you should be instantly banned from the NBA. Lugans Dort, minus 53 on the floor. Jeremiah Robinson Earl gets to start at the five. Minus 56 on the floor. Shea Gillis Alexander, thank goodness, was not on the floor here uh, playing last night. So he was like, that was y'all. Y'all lost by 73 points. I didn't lose by 73 points. I didn't even play. I was out. But this is what y'all do when I'm not on the floor. Lose by 73 points. That is a y'all problem. And I know Shea Gillis Alexander is making call after call after call after call, asking, begging, pleading, please get me off this team. Please, please. They were going to have me be a minus 50 on the floor. They were going to have me a minus 50 on the floor. Get me out of OKC, please, please. So the Thunder were obviously trash, obviously. And then for the Grizzlies, they did it without John Morant, folks. They put up 152 points and won by 73 points without Ja Morant, folks. Um, who got it done? Everybody. Look at this bench, folks. Are y'all ready for this bench? De'Anthony Melton off the bench, 19 points. Santi Aldama, 18 points off the bench. Xavier Tillman, 11 points off the bench. Brandon Clark, 11 points off the bench. John Concher, 17 points off the bench. Jared Culver, 11 points off the bench. Everybody was eating. It was like Thanksgiving dinner out here in Grizzlies. Everybody was getting a plate here and some leftovers and a take-home plate here for this Grizzlies team. They were all on point, and the Thunder are a sorry excuse for an organization. Jeez Louise. All right, we're done with that game, and we'll, for the Thunder's sake, we'll never talk about that game again. Uh, all right, next game up here is the Pistons at the Suns, and the Suns get yet another win here. 18 straight wins. It's the franchise record. Absolutely fantastic. Suns get the win here, 114-103 over the Pistons. Anybody do good on the Pistons? Jeremy Grant got it done, 34 points, 6 rebounds, shot 52%, but unfortunately they still come up short like we know this Pistons team does. And then for the Suns, still no Devin Booker. Remember, he got a little banged up. Uh, in their last game against the Warriors. Still not ready to go here. Still not in. So Landry Shamit fills in for Devin Booker at the two. 14 points by Landry Shamit. Nothing what really Devin Booker does. Chris Paul, 12 points, 12 assists. We had DeAndre Ayton, 17 points, 12 rebounds. McCall Bridges, 18 points. And then this bench, folks. And once again, this bench of the Suns, this is what's going to propel them to actually win the finals this year. The bench. We have Cameron Johnson, 19 points off the bench. Cameron Payne, 19 points off the bench. JaVale McGee, 10.6 rebounds off the bench in 15 minutes. So an absolutely great performance here with the Suns bench. And they're definitely going to need that with Devin Booker out. So shout to the Suns. That is our 10 minutes, but we've still got uh, one more game to go over, so let's keep going here. Suns get the win, 114-103 over the Pistons. And then the last game last night, Spurs at the Blazers. Spurs get the win, 114-83 to over the Blazers. No Damian Lillard still for this Blazers team, so still really no chance of winning these games. They start Anthony Simons at the one, only played 10 minutes, no points on three shots. CJ McCollum, 16 points on 38% shooting. Whenever Damian Lillard's out, it's got to be CJ McCollum stepping it up like Chris Middleton without Giannis. But both those teams lose because the number two doesn't step up. That is your role as the number two to assume number one responsibilities when the number one option is not on the floor. So come on, CJ McCollum. McCollum. Yes, you know, we can kind of knock Damian Lillard for not getting it done for the Blazers this season. I mean, what 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 is this Blazers team record, folks? I mean, it's going to be unrecognizable of what this Blazers team has been doing the last five seasons. Uh, we got this Blazers team as the ninth seed right now at 11 and 12. Come on, this is not the Blazers. Come on, CJ McCollum. You're a part of this Blazers team. You're a reason for the lackluster, um, <clears throat> the lackluster overall achievement of the Blazers team. Come on, please step it up when you get called upon he hasn't really done that uh, minus 28 on the floor, the worst on the squad from last night. Come on, get it done, please. Uh, Nurchich, 10.7 rebounds. Robert Covington, 10.6 rebounds. And Norman Powell, 16 points, 4 rebounds. Uh, just not enough to overcome the Spurs, folks. And we know the Spurs team is lethal, right? This Spurs team is one of the best teams in the league, right? 
Of course not. Bad loss by the Blazers last night. And then who got it done for the Spurs? Well, their entire starting lineup had a really great night. We had DeJounte Murray, 15 points, 13 assists, 7 rebounds. What a stat line. Jeez Louise. Derek White, 12 points, 5 assists, 7 rebounds. We had Jacob Podol at the 5, 14 points, 9 rebounds. Keldon Johnson, 14 points, 7 rebounds. And Doug McDermott, 16 points and 4 rebounds. Everybody was getting boards over everybody on the Blazers. And then they had a great bench contribution from Bryn Forbes, 18 points. Bryn Forbes from... Um, he was on the box a couple seasons ago. No, Bryn Forbes uh, came in in the playoffs trying to get it done. Bryn Forbes gets it done here for the Spurs team. 18 points off the bench. So Spurs get the win here, 114-83. to 83. All right, that was all the basketball from last night. Let's quickly see if we can make a little bit of money in the NBA tonight. We stayed away from all the spreads yesterday. Nothing was really tickling our fancy. But let's see if there's any action on NBA Friday. So here we go. First game up here, Heat at the Pacers. Heat plus 5.5. Pacers minus 5.5 here. You know, before the Bam out of bio injury, this is a great bet. And it probably wouldn't be Heat plus five and a half at that point. Uh, no Bam out of bio. We really can't. Oh, no Bam out of bio and no Jimmy Butler. No, thank you. We know we're not going to swallow the five here for the Pacers because we don't believe in the Pacers either. But uh, no great value here. Stay away from betting the Heat, folks. No Bam out of bio. Jim, no Jimmy Butler. That's their lifeblood of the team. Yes, Tyler here is good, but he can't single handedly carry a squad. And that's no disrespect to Tyler Hero. That's just nobody can do that besides LeBron James or Kevin Durant. And nobody is even close to those two, especially Tyler Hero. No disrespect to Tyler Hero, but it's Tyler Hero. All right. <clears throat> Oh, oh, hang on. I think we found some great value here. Next game up, Cavs at the Wizards. Cavs plus three and a half. Wizards minus three and a half. We get three and a half points here by the Cavs with just CD Osmond out. We can deal with that. For the Wizards, what do we got here? Denny Avidaje game time decision and Aaron Holiday game time decision. So this Cavs team just had a really good win against the Heat. Once again, no Jimmy Butler or Bam Adebayo in that game, but it's still, it was a dominant win, like 30 point win there, um, which which was what you're supposed to do without those two players. So this Cavs team is rolling, folks. I'm absolutely loving everything about this Cavs team. The bench is really starting to come alive. Jared Allen, obviously. Um, so give us Cavs plus three and a half, folks. Bingo, bango, loving the value. All right, next game up here, 76ers at the Hawks. And, man, oh, man, I kind of like the 76ers here as well. 76ers plus two, Hawks minus two. For the 76ers, Tobias Harris is a game-time decision. And for the Hawks, Bohan, Bogdan Bogdanovich is still out here. Ooh, ooh. 76ers coming off that really poor performance against the Celtics. Uh, um, they, you know, were, everybody was shooting bad that game. But uh, we still made our bet, uh, 76ers plus three, we hit it. Uh, 76ers plus two here. I don't see them having back-to-back -back bad games. Uh, we'll see if anybody can shut down Joel Embiid. Um, I think this 76ers team is better overall than the Hawks are. We know that this Hawks team has kind of turned the corner a little bit. But I'm ready to bet on this 76ers team coming off that bad performance shooting-wise where Joel Embiid was locked down. I think they get it done. And the Hawks missing that shooter of Bogdanovich. Give me the 76ers plus two, folks. I think I'm loving that as well. All righty. Now we're cooking with gas here. Woof. All righty. Can we keep it going here? We got the Timberwolves at the Nets. Timberwolves plus seven and a half nets minus seven and a half not gonna bet against Kevin Durant they're still kind of getting it done in this Timberwolves team they're just too reliant on their big three they've got really nothing besides the big three of Carl Anthony Towns Russell and um, Anthony Edwards so we'll stay away from it uh, Magic at the Rockets nothing great there Magic plus two and a half Rockets minus two and a half two bad teams we're not gonna bet on uh, Pelicans at the Mavericks. Pelicans plus seven. Maverick, uh, Mavericks minus seven right here. Um, not bad by this Pelicans team. They just had a nice big loss. Um, hang on. Didn't they? Who, what was their last big win? Didn't they have a big win? They beat the Clippers 123-104 two games ago. Just lost to the Mavericks 139-107 in their last game. So that's a back-to-back -back matchup there. We're going to stay away from that one. Uh, Mavericks had the big old win in their first meeting two days ago. And we're not going to kind of, you know, play that game of back-to-backs we don't like any team <clears throat> betting on any team playing back-to-back -back, and I'm not going to bet on any back-to-back -back series either so Pelicans Mavericks is out of the discussion 
All right, then we get the Celtics at the Jazz here. Celtics plus 7.5, Jazz minus 7.5. This Jazz team is one of the deepest teams in the NBA, folks. Uh, for the Celtics team, is Jalen Brown playing? Jalen Brown is out, so we will stay away from it. If Jalen Brown was playing, I would swallow the 7.5 here. I would take the Jazz minus 7.5. We know the Celtics are worse with Jalen Brown on the floor, but uh, with him in, maybe a late backdoor cover. This Jazz team should win here, but we'll stay away from the spread. Um, then we get the Suns at the Warriors game to match up. Once again, we'll stay away from this one. A repeat of a couple of games ago where the Suns beat the Warriors. The Warriors are trying to get the revenge here. Suns plus, man, Suns plus seven points. Is that right? Suns plus seven? That seems too good to pass up. Devin Booker is out, though. Uh, but they got it done without him. Devin Booker left the game. He only played 15 minutes in that first meeting against the Warriors. Suns plus seven? That seems to be a little bit disrespectful value. I get it's no Devin Booker, but it's still the Suns team. They're more than just Devin Booker. You don't win 18 games in a row with just one player getting it done single-handedly for the squad. So the Warriors may win this game, but don't disrespect the Suns team by, by saying it's not going to be close. Close. We got to take the seven points here by the Suns. Give us that. And then the last game of the night, the Clippers at the Lakers. Clippers plus two, Lakers minus two. LeBron James is good to go, or a game time decision, but should be good to go. Out of the COVID-19 protocols because of all the false positives or whatever the heck happened in that crazy scenario where LeBron James tweets out fishing emojis and fish emojis to be like, hey, something fishy going on. And obviously it was right because the next day he's like, hey, I can play now. What's good? <laughs> Something truly was fishy going on. Um, what else do we get here? Anthony Davis, game time decision for the Clippers. We get Nicholas Batum is out. But uh, we'll stay away from this one. We've already got three great values up on the board. And this is what we're going to be rocking with, folks. We've hit our last three bets. We've got our finger on the pulse in the NBA, in the NFL. Both of them together here. Cavs plus three and a half. 76ers plus two. Suns plus seven. Loving it. Absolutely fantastic three-team parlay right here, folks. Plus 596 odds. Sheesh. Teams getting points, folks. Teams. Teams getting points. Give us those points. Fantastic value all around. Alrighty, that is all the NBA we had to go over for today. So let's shift gears a little bit to our surprise, folks. We've got more Panini packs here. Panini NFT packs. Uh, they just officially released their N uh, NFL NFT cards a couple of days ago. We bought those base packs, opened them up, and got nothing great. We sold two cards for $3 each. Womp womp. This is a dying platform, but uh, we got kind of suckered in again with the NFL NFT Mosaic Downtown inserts, folks. And these inserts, these physical cards, the downtown cards go for tons of money. Tons of money. I think the um, the Jamar Chase downtown is going for like $500 on the physical resale market. And uh, my brother had one and sold it for 100 real early on. Womp, womp, lost value, folks. How unfortunate. Um, he didn't take our advice. We said to hold on to it. He said he wanted to get the quick flip. We let him get the quick flip. He should have listened to takes by fans. Everybody should always listen to takes by fans, folks. Um, alrighty, so we bought three packs of these, and I don't even think these have sold out now. Um, it's been an hour and a half, basically, since they've released, and they are still for sale. Once again, we're, we're really not making any more money. This is probably the final packs we buy here. They're just not making money like they used to. In the beginning when we were opening these packs and making some solid money every single time I doubt we make any money on these but these downtown insert cards do look really gosh dang good Let's go to the challenge here to see what some of these downtown cards we can get. Here's a Randy Moss one. Just look at the artwork. The artwork is fantastic. Um, kind of cartoon style. All of that. Very cool. Chase Young card. Uh, we get to TJ Watt downtown. Derek Carr downtown. Jerry Rice downtown card. Those are the uh, five cards that we can see. There's more cards. We're looking for a Mac Jones downtown card if we can. The challenge card is a Trevor Lawrence downtown downtown card so we won't be able to pull him and we're not going to be chasing the collection here because we don't believe there's any more money in this and we're not going to be buying these cards. 
Also, um, in these packs, it's one insert card and two base cards. So we can still get Mac Jones base cards, looking for any number one base card, obviously, and looking for any really maybe Tom Brady downtown card, if there is one, and a Mac Jones downtown card, if there is one. Mac Jones is the hot ticket and really the only hot item here um, in the uh, NFT digital space. So, let's go to these packs. We bought three of them, folks. We got suckered into buying three of them here. Um, so, we'll open them, see what we can get. Hopefully, a great pull, a number one, a Mac Jones. That's what we're looking for. So, here we go. First pack up. Let's get it cracking, get it ripping, get it shipping. Here we go, folks. Three cards, one insert, two bases. Uh, we know this one is the downtown because it is Glowing gold, so we'll uh, open those ones last here. So here we go. Base card, pack one, base card one. What do we got? Number one of anything, Mac Jones. Jalen Smith. Now, hey, hey, we, we are collecting the Walk of Fame defense right here. Jalen Smith. Yes, sir. I'll take this card. Number 475 out of 1999 right here. We are building the, I'll build the freaking Walk of Fame defense in the uh, digital space, folks. Yes, sir. Give us that. All righty. Base card, pack number one, base card number two. What do we got? <clears throat> Uh, Billy Sims, okay, no thank you, bad number, 1342 out of 1999, that is absolutely garbage, alrighty here, first insert card, something good, mac and cheese, Tom Brady, what do you got for us, insert card, downtown card, number one is... Peyton Manning, okay, it's a good number, 39 out of 500, okay, I um, mean, once again, just look at these cards, folks, cartoony, lighter kind of style, you got the horses in the back, because Colts, horses, Colts, horses, folks, there it is, Indianapolis, Indy 500, they got the checkered flags, they got the card, folks, are you getting it now, are you getting these inserts, so, Alrighty, not it's a good number. I'll take it a lower number, maybe a couple of bucks. We'll see what we get. But let's head over to pack number two. Here we go. Pack number two of our downtowns. What do we got? What do they got in store for us on pack number two? Let's do a little bit better. A little bit better than pack number one. Not a lot better. A lot better would be nice, but nice and small, a little bit better. Here we go. Pack two, base card number one. What do we got? What do we got? Oh, a Matt Ryan. Is that good? Of course not. Number 445 out of 1900. Nobody wants a Matt Ryan card. Nobody wants to play with a jack-in-the-box. Nobody wants to play with Matt Ryan. All right, here we go. Pack number two, base card number two. What do we got? What do we got? Alvin Kamara, who hasn't played in five games and is really the reason why the Saints are on, what, a five-game losing streak and why they lost last night. We got Alvin Kamara, but the Saints don't even have Alvin Kamara. We'll give the Saints Alvin Kamara back. We will. We don't even need this. We'll give it to them for free. This is nothing. All righty, here we go. Our insert card, our downtown where's the mac jones downtown card it better be right here here we go pack two downtown card number two what do we got josh allen downtown card number 428 out of 500 you've got the buffaloes behind them where the buffalo roam yes sir Alrighty, we've got one more pack here and have not really opened up anything really that exciting, anything that's really going to make us any money, and that's why we're doing this, folks, to make a little bit of money. Alrighty, final pack here. Here we go. Pack number three, base card number one. Come on, something good. Make us excited. I don't even want to reveal these three. The last six have been nothing great, folks. Can we get something great? Here we go. Base card number one. We got a... Oh, okay. Our luck is turning around the best quarterback in the NFL right now. To a tag of a low, folks. Woo. Alrighty. Our luck has changed. Woo. This is going for a million dollars, baby. Holy moly. We have struck gold diamond. Holy cow. Man, oh man, two attack of Aloha, folks. There it is. Woof. Admire the beauty of this card. 1439 out of 1999. 
Alrighty, base card number two. Last base card that we've got. Please be something. Well, I, I, I guess we can't do better than Tua, so it's going to be worse than Tua, but we'll see what we get here. Here we go. Base card number two. Last base card up is Danielle Hunter from the Vikings. Number 10, 23 out of 1999. Nothing great. Alrighty, here it is, folks. The last insert card. Last downtown card. Last chance at mac and cheese, folks. Can we pull the Maxter? Please, please, please. Fingers are crossed. Are y'all's fingers crossed? Y'all better be watching this with fingers crossed or it's on y'all that we don't pull the mac and cheese. Alrighty, here we go. Last pull. Last card. What do we got? What do we got? What do we got? Last card. Here it is. We got Russell Wilson downtown, the worst quarterback in the NFL right now. Uh, number 84 out of 500, and they got him in the Emerald City. I see Coral. What's up with the Coral? Seahawk, Sea and Hawk. Is that what they're trying to go for? All right. A little bit of a lame. Is that a little lame downtown? Sea and Hawk, and you put them together? I don't know. I get the Hawk. That's a Hawk. I think he's under the sea. All righty. All righty. No great polls. No jump out of your seat. Sell the show right now. Move to Hawaii because we don't need to do anything anymore. We can retire. Nothing like that. All right. Let's quickly check the auction house. Sometimes you can put these uh, uh, cards for auction up a little bit early. Uh, so let's see if there's anything kind of going currently and anything that we missed out on. Is our Tua card worth anything? How is that like a million dollars now? It should be. And uh, what are some of these uh, insert downtown cards going for? So here we go. Let's go to the trending cards that are active. Actively getting bid on and let's see what we've got here Mac and jo Mac Jones base cards are going for $35 folks this is why we wanted to pull them $35 so far for Mac and cheese all right Mac Jones downtown card oh one has been pulled oh what did we miss out on $30 so far man oh man and it's not even the best number 121 out of 500 so there was still a little bit of oh, money to be made we missed out on it this Mac Jones base card is going for $53 because it's number 15 out of 999 all right TJ Watt um, downtown card is going for $12 so far, but that was uh, number 500 out of 500. Number one out of 500, obviously going for the most, but also number 500 out of 500, those go for a decent money too. So if you get a regular uh, downtown card for TJ Watt, I don't know if you're getting 12 bucks out of it. All right, what else do we got here? Tom Brady, downtown card, currently going for $20. We missed it, folks. Look at this one. Pirates all over the beach. Pirates, Bucks, you get it, folks? Um, all right, um, what else do we got? Tua, oh, the Tua base card. What is the Tua base card going for? Anything less than a million dollars is utter disrespect. And it is going for, oh, my God, it's on sale, folks. $15. You better buy this card right here. Jeez. And it's a great number, 7 out of 19 dollars so I don't think ours is going to be worth that much, folks. Unfortunate. Um, what else do we got? Base mac and cheese, 26. Tom Brady, 30. Base Tom Brady, 5. Uh, Jerry Rice downtown card going for $5. These mac and cheese downtown cards, 14 $5. So, doesn't seem like we pulled anything great, folks. Doubt we will be able to make any of our money back or any profit. How truly unfortunate. Um, and that it seems to be it as of right now. Nothing going for crazy money. Nothing going crazy. So, we can end it here. All right. Oh, hang on, hang on. Aaron Rodgers and Patrick Mahomes. What do we got going here for their downtowns? Four and five dollars, respectively. This is what we're saying, folks. Josh Allen, downtown going for seven. Trey Lance, downtown going for 21. Oh, man, missed the Trey Lance card as well. So, our Josh Allen, seven bucks so far. All righty. Um, this Derek Carr one is pretty good looking um, because of the Raiders and they're in Las Vegas. So it's a magic uh, act classic 15 bucks. Wow. Yeah, that's a great card looking. That's a real good looking card right there. Uh, Trey Lance, five, four dollars downtown edition. All righty. That's what we've got so far, folks. That's what we've got. We missed, but, uh, you know, if you want to try your hand uh, for, you know, the $20, $30 pull, they are still up here, 15 bucks a pack. You get the downtown, you get three ba or two base cards. That's what we've got.
All righty. Um, all righty. So let's shift gears again here to the actual NFL. We had the physical NFL space. Now let's go, or the digital NFL space. Now let's go to the actual NFL here with the game from last night, the Thursday night game, Cowboys at the Saints. We took the Cowboys minus six. They win by 10. Bingo, bango, back to back hitting on Thursday night football games. Love to see it. So, um, Cowboys get the win here, 27-17. to Obviously, Taysom Hill was the starting quarterback, and, uh, you know, a lot of people are clowning him on Twitter, and they really have been clowning him ever since he got that kind of $40 million contract extension um, to kind of be a gadget player here. Uh, I think we're going a little bit too a little bit too harsh on Trevor Simeon. He really did keep the game close. Yes, he did throw four interceptions, but three came in the fourth quarter when they were down double digits, just trying to do something, move the ball down the field. But this was a really close game, folks. 7-7, then it was 10-7 Cowboys, then it was 13-7 Cowboys, and it really could have been a tie game because the first interception thrown by Trevor Simeon was actually a really great ball here by Trevor Simeon. So here we go, Cowboys up 10-7, two minutes left in the second quarter, and the Saints are at the Cowboys' 26-yard line. They are in scoring field position. They're down three, they're in field goal position, it's second and 10. Um, So they can tie it 10-10 going into pretty much halftime. Or they could potentially even take the lead 14 to 10 here going into halftime. So let's watch this play right here. This was an interception by the Cowboys defense. And once again, great interception by the Cowboys defense. Ball Hawks, Walk of Fame defense, folks. Dan Quinn on the sideline being the head coach. And man, oh man, the defense truly took off. Uh, you know, we'll break down the stats and all the numbers in a second here. But I want to focus on this throw here because everybody's just jumping to the conclusion that Taysom Hill is is trash and I'm not calling him the best quarterback in the league or anything like that but we've known this Saints offense struggles they don't have Alvin Kamara and I think a lot of people are that's their identity it's like the Panthers not having Christian McCaffrey nobody's expecting Sam Darnold or whoever they got at quarterback Cam Newton geez Louise Cam Newton's definitely not winning without Christian McCaffrey are you kidding me But nobody's expecting the Panthers to win without Christian McCaffrey. That is basically their face of the franchise, their identity. The Saints are the same exact way with Alvin Kamara, folks. And I think a lot of people are just talking like the Saints have Alvin Kamara the last couple of weeks. I think they've lost, what, four or five games straight, and Alvin Kamara has missed the last, what, three, four, five games out here? So, yes, you know, the Saints are not a good football team. We don't believe they're a good football team. Uh, They do need all their pieces. They have such lackluster pieces uh, with no Michael Thomas and without Alvin Kamara. Sean Payton doesn't know what to do with the offense, and I don't know if he knows how to coach up these other kind of Tier 2 wide receivers. And, uh, you know, during this game here, you know, I was kind of thinking – about, you know, Sean Payton and all that, you know, kind of following the same kind of blueprint of Bill Belichick. Very, very highly regarded coaches. Obviously, Bill Belichick a little bit more, but Sean Payton, you know, is always in kind of the number two, number three conversation of best coaches, uh, kind of longevity-wise in the 2000s era, if you kind of want to classify it as that. Um, and Sean Payton lost Drew Brees, and you know this is the one year without Drew Brees. We saw Bill Belichick one year without Tom Brady, not the greatest by Bill Belichick last year, and you know the COVID situation in the uh, the uh, opt outs on the defensive side of the ball. We get it, uh, but I do think we also have to give Sean Payton the one year pass. We see what Bill Belichick is doing this year, back to being back to being fantastic, and how unfortunate for everybody in the NFC, uh, uh, in the AFC, and in the AFC. The East and really just in kind of in the NFL in general there that the Patriots are back hopefully you took advantage of the one year that they weren't back but they're back now uh, luckily Tom Brady and the Bucks took advantage of the Patriots being out for one year but they're back now and it's truly unfortunate for every other team in the league but I do believe we have to give Sean Payton one year. Uh, we can't really say that this year is going to ruin him as the coach, saying he can't coach without one of the greatest quarterbacks to ever do it and all that. So um, as the season finishes out for the Saints, I doubt they make the playoffs. Um, they obviously need Alvin Kamara back before we even think about the Saints even making the playoffs. 
Uh, but I do think we have to give Sean Payton a little bit of a free pass this season for the rest of the year and all that. But next season, Sean Payton is truly going to be under the microscope uh, since Bill Belichick was able to turn around in one year. Sean Payton, that's the bar. That's the bar. That's the comp. That's the bar. And we'll see if Sean Payton can do that next season. But let's get back to uh, uh, Taysom Hill here. He was looking decent. They were decently moving the ball throughout the first half, and then the fourth quarter came, and that's when all the interceptions came. Truly unfortunate. But let's get back to this play right here, right before halftime, trying to do something, trying to either tie up the game or take the lead. And this is Taysom Hill's first interception. And once again, it's to Kenny Stills. And Kenny Stills, we'll break down all the stats in a second, folks, I promise. But um, he went 0 of 5. He had five targets, zero catches here by Kenny Stills. And this is what they're working with because they don't have these great wide receivers because Michael Tom is out here so Taysom Hill trying his best out here and here we go from the 26 yard line second and 10 down three points Taysom Hill is going to throw a nice beautiful ball it's a little bit of a one-on-one -on, -one on the outside Kenny still gets free look at the nice separation and he has to Taysom Hill has to put this ball over the uh, the linebacker right here, but drop it right before the safety. And what does he do? He puts it in the perfect position. Kenny Stills is able to make a play on this ball, but Kenny Stills is such an inconsistent receiver, especially as he's kind of aging a little bit out of this league. It's just kind of declining over the last couple of seasons. His production and his consistent ability at the wide receiver catching position, and it kind of goes off his fingertips, and then the Cowboys Cowboys ball hawks defense does exactly what ball hawks do they toe tap on literally like oh, the last blade of turf that is in the super or not even the superdome anymore I don't even know what the it's not Mercedes dome anymore I don't know what the Saints um is it Caesars Palace or something like that? Caesars? Uh, Caesars Arena? Um, you know, betting takes all. Uh, but, I mean, it's a great route by Kenny Stills. It's open. Taysom Hill puts it really well. I mean, look at that fit right here. That's uh, that's accurate as heck. It's just Kenny Stills can't get his hands really on the ball well, and they just kind of tip off of his hands, and then the Cowboys defense makes an absolutely amazing I mean look at this folks look at that oh my god two hands on the ball that last toe drag swag oh my god give credit to curse baby in this Cowboys walk of fame defense all rising stars and only stars can make this interception right here man holy cow that toe drag look at that so close to being touching out of bounds and all that but he drags this toe right here she that's absolutely fantastic. The Cowboys defense absolutely showing out last night. But that was a great throw by Taysom Hill. And we know Taysom Hill is a solid quarterback. Everybody's just knocking him, knocking him, knocking him. Uh, but I do think there's some gr uh, bright spots here by the Saints. Now, why the Saints lost last night was because they asked Taysom Hill to throw the ball 41 times. That's not, once again, we're getting way too caught up here in this new age of NFL of just pure drop back quarterbacks get some finesse in your game start to mix up the offense a little bit and we know Sean Payton's kind of been holding back this Saints offense we haven't really we, we liked really every quarterback that the Saints have put out we liked Jameis Winston we loved the accuracy they just weren't taking the deep shots we liked Trevor Simeon same thing good accuracy just weren't taking the deep shots and once again we kind of liked Taysom Hill a uh, nice dual threat approach but they didn't tailor the offense to Taysom Hill he threw the ball 41 times and they only ran the ball without Taysom Hill about 14 times Mark Ingram got 10 rushes and Ty Montgomery got four rushes so it's not like they were using a well-balanced run and pass game to um to use Taysom Hill's abilities which is a lot of running and misdirection Taysom Hill has doesn't have the big arm so you can't really go just pure vertically drop back and just drop back vertically you've got to go a little horizontal with the screens the wide receiver screens the tight end screens getting motion in the backfield running the ball read option with Taysom Hill they're still not 
uh, tailoring the offense to what Taysom Hill needs the offense to be tailored to. A little bit of a Ravens. Obviously not as much because Taysom Hill is not as good as Lamar Jackson. Although, although, uh, four interceptions by Taysom Hill this week. Four interceptions by Lamar Jackson last week. Kind of similar comparable stats from last week. So maybe they are the same player. I know if I ever say that, uh, kind of officially, I will be shot dead if I say Taysom Hill is the same as Lamar Jackson, or if I say that Taysom Hill is better than Lamar Jackson, I will be instantly murdered for saying that. And I'm not saying that, I'm just saying it's a little interesting these last two games, kind of comparable, uh, kind of comparable stats a little bit. Let's talk about these stats since we're talking about comparable stats, and I actually kind of want to uh, compare them to last week of Lamar Jackson, see if uh, how on par they actually are <coughs> of each other. But here we go. Taysom Hill goes 19 of 41. Now, I don't want Taysom Hill throwing the ball 41 times. I don't understand why they did that. And it's not like they got down big, bad, where they had to abandon the running game and only pass the ball. No, no, no. The biggest deficit, like we said, it could have been 10-10 going into halftime. They're down 13-7 to going into halftime. Well done for the Cowboys to get some points out of that interception with only about two minutes left to drive down the field 71 yards to kick a nice short field goal. Very well done. So the Cowboys take a 13-7 lead. It's one possession. And then the first drive out of halftime for the Saints. They march down the field on a 55-yard drive. Eats up five minutes and scores a field goal. Now it's 13-10. Still in the game. And then it goes to 20-10. But it's still 20-10. Two possessions. You don't have to abandon the running game. And now this is how much time left? Four minutes left in the third quarter. A 10-point deficit. So there was absolutely no reason to abandon the running game and have Taysom Hill throw the ball 41 times. Dak Prescott threw the ball 40 times. So why are we having Taysom Hill throwing the ball more than Dak Prescott? Should that ever be? Of course not. So here we go. Taysom Hill, 19 of 41, folks. What do we got? 40, 46% completion percentage. Absolutely atrocious. Can never get behind that. Uh, 264 yards, pretty solid for 19 completions. Two interceptions, the four, uh, two touchdowns, the four interceptions. Three of the interceptions all came in the fourth quarter. Um, not going to put too much weight in all these picks. Obviously, they were all bad. I mean, it's not like the first one. The first pick was not on Taysom Hill. It was great. These other three were all on Taysom Hill though bad reads all that bad accuracy all that in the fourth quarter but they were down 10 he was just trying to move the ball quickly uh first interception came uh when there was uh six minutes left in your down 10 you just got to try and move the ball so I'm not really going to count these other three interceptions uh yes they're in the stats it's bad bad optically but I'm not going to weigh them that much in my overall opinion on what Taysom Hill is, is as a quarterback and I'm also not going to count his last touchdown that came with uh two minutes left and it go it went big big to Damian Harris. I mean, and um, to make it a 10 point game at the end because they did get down 17 because of a pick six. So I'm not going to count these last kind of three interceptions and I'm not going to count the last touchdown. So he basically went 19 of 41, 264 yards, one touchdown, one pick. It wasn't that bad. I don't think overall it was that bad of a performance by Taysom Hill, given the lack of weapons that the Saints have. It's not like they were winning consistently with Trevor Simeon. It wasn't like the offense was looking so magnificent with Jameis Winston at the start of the season. I don't think Taysom Hill was looking that bad for what the Saints team is. I don't believe he deserves all the hate and the blame and the knocking on social media and even in the media. Nick Wright's hammering him, calling him a cosplaying quarterback. I don't know if I totally agree with that. I agree with the broadest of terms of what that means. I don't know how specifically I do agree with that though. Um, and then Taysom Hill, the dual threat ability, solid. And this is why we wanted to see Taysom Hill because we know with Jameis Winston and Trevor Simeon, just pure drop back passers, they have no dual threat ability in their body, folks. Um, this is why we wanted to see the offense get shaken up here with the Saints since just a pure drop back style wasn't working. Taysom Hill is not a pure drop back style quarterback. He gives you that dual threat ability and they had the dual threat ability with Taysom Hill. He led the team in rushing yards, 11 rushes for 101 yards, uh, but you have him throwing the ball 41 times, and that's why you lose this game. 
So it's just Sean Payton not switching up the offense, the offensive scheme here. I don't know what they're doing here in New Orleans. You've lost, what, five straight games? Shake something up. What are you going to do, lose? You're going to lose anyway. Come on, Sean. You still have a crack at the playoffs, folks, at 5-7. and seven. You can still get the wild card. Figure it out, shake it up, and get it right. You can move forward with Taysom Hill, but you must tailor the offense to a more dual threat style, misdirection, motion, read option, screen style. Get the ball out of his hands quickly. Misdirection, confuse the defense. That's what they need to do. And until they start doing that, we'll never buy the Saints. And we haven't been buying the Saints. Just took the Cowboys minus six last night. All right, so we just talked about Taysom Hill stats. Overall, not the greatest, but some some decent, some decent green flags and bright spots mixed into this game. I just want to quickly take a look at Lamar Jackson stats from last week against the Browns, um, just because a little comparable. Uh, so let's see how comparable in totality. Lamar Jackson we had four interceptions. That's why we're kind of comparing them here. Uh, Lamar Jackson last week against the Browns, four interceptions. Lamar Jackson threw 20 of 32. We get... Um, 62%, which is a lot better than, what, 46%. So uh, we'll give Lamar Jackson the accuracy. And Lamar Jackson wasn't even throwing the ball th- wasn't even throwing the ball 41 times. He threw the ball 32 times. Saints, please don't ever have Taysom Hill throw the ball 41 times. Colts, stop having Carson Wentz throw the ball 50 times a game. Can we all rein it in a little bit, please, please? Uh, so Lamar Jackson, 20 of 32, better completion percentage, but Lamar Jackson only had 165 yards. Taysom Hill had 100 more yards. Uh, uh, um, he had one touchdown. Lamar Jackson had one touchdown, four interceptions. Taysom Hill had one touchdown, basically one interception when we just kind of ref- configure it all. And Lamar Jackson had 17 rushes for 64, 68 yards. And Taysom Hill had 11 rushes for 101 yards. Nine yards a carry by Taysom Hill. Lamar Jackson only had four yards a carry. So, is Taysom Hill better than Lamar Jackson, folks? I don't want to get murdered, so I will leave <laughs> I will leave that up to y'all. I'll, I'll leave it up to y'all to get murdered, okay? <laughs> Alrighty. So, Taysom Hill. Overall, not the greatest performance, but you could. Bi- I think you can build off of him. I still think you could tailor the offense to Taysom Hill to have a winning performance decently consistently all right let's finish up the Saints here and then we'll start talking about the Cowboys uh Mark Ingram second leading rusher here for the Saints 10 rushes for 28 yards nothing uh Ty Montgomery four rushes for 21 yards once again abandoned the running game early on why 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 who was Taysom Hill throwing to? We had Deontay Harris, leading receiver, four catches, 96 yards, and a touchdown. We had Lil Jordan Humphrey, two catches, 49 yards, a touchdown. Nick Vanette, three catches, 48 yards. Juwan Johnson, one catch, 27 yards. Trey Quan Smith, two catches, 50 yard, 15 yards. And then, once again, the most underutilized, a little disrespected receiver here of the Saints, Marquez Callaway, one catch for 13 yards. He did have four targets. Get him the ball more. Or please, 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 jeez. We're asking, we're clamoring for it every single week, and we are still not getting Marquez Callaway being the featured wide receiver right here. Don't understand it. Ty Montgomery, four catches for nine yards. So nothing great here by the Saints. Kenny Stills, <laughs> Kenny Stills, five targets, no catches, ball off of his hands, interception. Come on, Kenny, get it together. All right, now let's uh, shift gears to the Cowboys. No Mike McCarthy. Um, Did the Cowboys play better? Um, Once again, everybody clowns Mike McCarthy. And once again, I don't disagree with that. I don't love Mike McCarthy as a coach. I would never hire Mike McCarthy as a head coach. Uh, That's just me. I just don't like, I just don't buy the guy. I don't buy the man. Um um, and once again, underperformed with Aaron Rodgers in Green Bay a little bit. One Super Bowl appearance. Come on, come on, come on. Um, so, uh, did the Cowboys play better with Mike McCarthy out and Dan Quinn down on the sideline? The defense played really well, but the defense really always plays really well. So, I don't think the Cowboys played any different or better without Mike McCarthy. Um, so, I guess Mike McCarthy can still be the head coach. I would kind of maybe think about, if I was Jerry Jones, maybe think about having Dan Quinn be the head coach. Maybe. We'll see. I doubt it happens, but I think it's something to consider. Cowboys had four interceptions, four turnovers, and the Cowboys defense was fantastic all game long. 
We'll talk about it. Walk of Fame defense. We can't talk about the Cowboys winning games and being dominant on defense by not watching the Walk of Fame defense highlights. Right, folks? All right, so Dak Prescott here. Uh, he went 26 of 40 better than Taysom Hill. Thank go thank goodness. Uh, 26 of 40. We got officially 65% completion percentage. We'll take that. 238 yards. A little bit of dink and dunk on 26 completions. He had one touchdown, one interception. The interception came here in the fourth quarter when they're just trying to ice the game. He throws a pick, and then the Saints throw a pick right off of the pick. So nothing great there by the Saints of not taking advantage of the turnover. Got to do that. Uh, Tony Pollard here in the rushing. Seven rushes for 71 yards and a touchdown. Tony Pollard doing his thing. Uh, what was it last week on Thanksgiving? The kickoff return for a touchdown to the house, 100 yards. And then this time he ran for about, what do we got, 50 yards? I think it was like 50. Uh, 58 yards rushing here. One play for Tony Pollard. Just catch it speed. We're going to watch. Well, let's watch the play now because it's so gosh dang good. We know Tony Pollard is absolutely phenomenal. He's fast as hack. He complements this Cowboys offense absolutely perfectly. We know Zeke Elliott's a little bit more of a physical runner. So that just opens up you know, Tony Pollard to do his thing rushing wise. So here it is. They're up three points right here. Once again, in the third quarter, still a close game here with the, by the saints four minutes left in the third quarter. It's a three point game. I don't, I think we're blowing Taysom Hill a little bit out of proportion. Yes. The fourth quarter was really bad, but at the end of the day, he still kept the overall game close without Elm Kamara and his first start, uh, 12 weeks into the season. This Cowboys defense has been together for 12, straight games you think they're going to get beat by a third string first time starting quarterback this season I think we're just taking it a little bit too far on Taysom Hill that's all I'm saying a little bit too far rein it in a tad still have your fun with clowning Taysom Hill I'm not going to deny y'all y'all fun but just rein it in a tad that's all I that's all I'm saying folks a tad um, and I think he, I, I know, I, th I think I might get murdered for saying this as well, but I think he deserved the $40 million. I, I've got no problem with them giving him $40 million. I truly don't. Uh, he's a gadget guy. He's great. He evolves the offense uh, at the tight end position when he has a quarterback and he can fill in for a quarterback. Keep the game close. If they have Alvin Kamara, they could win this game, folks. So here it is, Tony Pollard ripping it off, folks, hitting the hole, and he is gone. Sheer speed, not looking back, not looking left or right, just sheer speed. He knows he can beat anybody right here. Great job blocking by the Cowboys offensive line right there. Great job by Tony Pollard to break that last tackle. A little bit of arm on the thigh, doesn't stall him at all, and he's able to run once again, just rush and rush and rush, and man, oh man, I want to know. The exact speed of Tony Pollard right here. Uh, where is the uh, next-gen stats with NFL? What was his top speed right here? That looks to me like 17 miles an hour, folks. That looks to me like 17 miles an hour. Let me go to next-gen on Twitter here, right here. Um, is my eye, can I spot speed like that, folks? I would say 17 miles an hour. They've got it uh, capped off here. They tweet it out. Let me see. They tweet out that run. I don't think they did. Oh, and Paul. Oh, okay. Well, they did. Here it is. Tony Pollard. He reached a top speed of 21 miles an hour on this run. Woof, woof. Man, oh, man. Our eyes are, need a little bit of adjustment right here. I was seeing a little bit slower. Jeez. Uh, but 21.17 miles an hour right here by Tony Pollard. Holy moly. The fastest speed reached by a Dallas, boy, Dallas Cowboys ball carrier this season. Man, man. He also had his second highest top speed. Or, hey, wouldn't this be his first? Okay, last week he ran 20.97 miles an hour on the 100-yard kickoff on Thanksgiving Day against the Raiders. So, this man, we know he's got absolute great speed out here. Yes, sir. Um, so, Tony Pollard, man, oh, man, he brings great energy to this offense. Um... Where did we got? Okay, I think it left. Okay. But yeah, um, he's absolutely fantastic. Tony Pollard, uh, seven carries, 71 yards, a touchdown, and he had that big breakout kind of a little bit of game, a little bit of game ceiling, a little knock in the, a uh, little bit of a nail in the coffin right there to open it up to a 10 point lead. And that's kind of when uh, everything kind of ensued with the Saints uh, when they started to kind of throw the interceptions when they got down two possessions in the fourth quarter. So. 
Tony Pollard putting nails in coffins out here. Ezekiel Elliott, 13 rushes for 45 yards, 3.5 yards a carry, not anything bad. Um, and then CeeDee Lamb had a nice little end around, one rush for 33 yards. Once again, this is what I kind of want to see from this Cowboys offense a little bit more. Once again, this Cowboys offense is a little bit just too much of just pure drop back and letting Dak Prescott kind of sling the ball around. You've got Tony Pollard, you got the nice speed. Once again, incorporate that to the offense a little bit more with some read options, some quick kind of wide receiver screens, get the ball out of Dak. Dak Prescott's hand, the misdirection. I really think that can open up the offense. Um, you know, we're seeing this Cowboys offense, you know, struggle here and there sometimes. And even in this game, this game was close all game, basically. And uh, we're going to talk about CeeDee Lamb and Dak Prescott's connection in a second. But I think you've got so many pieces. This Cowboys offense is truly, I would say, I would say number one, but I'll kind of, you know, uh, I'll hedge myself a little bit by saying definitely top five of just pure best rosters of talent and weapons wise offensively. And they're just a, a tad, a tad lackluster offensively in their overall production, I would say. Just, just a tad, folks. I'm not going overboard. Just a tad. Um, so just get a little bit more creative with the offense. Once again, with the Saints, you can't be dropped back with Taysom Hill. Uh, the Bills, they're just playing drop back passing with Josh Allen. You've got speed. You've got Cole Beasley and um, uh, Stephon Diggs. You can do speed and uh, just quick hitters and misdirection. You've obviously got to get the running game going. The Cowboys, they have the running game, so it's easier for them to implement a little bit more of the misdirection offense. I think they got to do a little bit something here to spice up the offense a little bit. All right, and then who was Dak Prescott throwing to? We had C.D. Lamb, leading receiver, seven catches, 89 yards. Very, very well done. But the, the connection in the chemistry between Dak Prescott and C.D. Lamb, it's got to get more tightened up. It's got to get buttoned up a little bit more right here. And I got this play that really um, does kind of pointed out right here um you know cd lamb still had a great night i'm not knocking cd lamb and i'm not knocking dak prescott but 13 targets and only seven receptions amari cooper two targets two receptions uh dak prescott and amari cooper uh amari Co uh, dak prescott owes a little bit of his success his success to amari cooper whenever he has amari cooper on the field he plays so much more better and their connection has never really wavered like his in cd lamb's connection has uh, really last season and this season. season. CeeDee Lamb, 13 targets, 7 receptions. Amari Cooper, 2 targets, 2 receptions, no problem. Uh, so we got this play right here. First quarter, they're going for it on fourth down. Once again, these coaches being very aggressive. Even Dan Quinn, you know, first uh, first time being a head coach here for the Cowboys since Mike McCarthy was out. Uh, he's like, yeah, we're going for it on fourth and two from the Saints 32-yard line. That would have been a makeable field goal. Uh, uh, it's a 0-0 game, so they would have been up 3 nothing, taking the lead. But they go for it on fourth and two, being aggressive. Once again, everybody going a little bit too far. Everybody, we just need to rain and everything just a tad and these teams can really just start turning it around just like that can y'all call me whatever teams are struggling call me or just watch the show will y'all just watch the show um i can fix everybody <laughs> i can fix everybody offenses folks it's not that hard Jeez. uh so here we go fourth and uh fourth and two Dak Prescott under center. He's going to target CeeDee Lamb, and CeeDee Lamb's going to be 100% wide open, but that chemistry between Dak Prescott and CeeDee Lamb just a hair off, and it derails the fourth down pickup. It could have potentially went for the touchdown right here. So here's the play. Dak Prescott under center. The nice play action. CeeDee Lamb starting on the left side, running in the backfield, all the way to the right side, getting open, and it works to perfection. Then he goes upfield. This is CeeDee Lamb right here. He's working his way up the field now. Dak Prescott sees it. He reads it absolutely perfectly. But C.D. Lamb right here, he turns his head outward when this entire middle of the field is open inward. Dak Prescott puts his ball inward, but C.D. Lamb turns his head outward. And that's the reason for the missed hookup right here. We're going to get it better off the back angle right here. It's going to be so much clearer off the back angle. Here we go. It's a, it's the next replay. Incomplete by C.D. Lamb. He has to, once again, since Dak Prescott saw it open inside, C.D. Lamb had to kind of quickly flip back 
back inside, and it's an incomplete pass right there. But this is wide open. We're going to get the back angle right here. Here we go. Dak Prescott. He sees it. Look at this entire middle of the field. Wide open, folks. Wide open. Dak Prescott sees it. Dak Prescott throws this ball on the inside shoulder, but we get a CD Lamb going to looking to the outside shoulder. So just bad read here. Bad miscommunication. No chemistry. They and this is. They need the chemistry on kind of the ad-lib plays. This wasn't an ad-lib play. This was the design play, and it was a great design play. It's 100% wide open, but they've got to get right on that same wavelength. Maybe this ball was supposed to be thrown to the out uh, to the outside shoulder. Maybe that's what the play called for, but Dak Prescott sees, hey, if he just looks inward instead of outward, this goes for the touchdown. So CeeDee Lamb must see that. He's running right up the field. He's got, he's got the vision. He sees the entire field. He should know that hey this should be going inside because the entire middle of the field is wide open here it is Dak Prescott throws this ball inside shoulder CD Lamb looks outside this is the best angle best frame right here folks inside ball outside look CD Lamb has to turn and twist all the way back inside to try to make a one-handed spectacular catch but just can't and they blow it. It's still a 0-0 game. The Saints take over on downs. And they could have changed the entire game off of this moment. Now the Cowboys still win. So this all gets brushed under the rug and nobody cares. But this is why the Cowboys do struggle. When they've been losing games, it's really the connection between Dak Prescott and CeeDee Lamb. It's really never any um, you know, big concern between Dak Prescott and Amari Cooper. They lose the game when Amari Cooper's out. And they have to focus on CD Lamb. And CD Lamb's great. His catching is great. Everything is great. They target him. He usually has great high yardage games. But overall, it could be even more. It could be even better. It could be next level, folks. So just got to clean up the chemistry a little bit. And this team could truly just be monsters in this league. If CeeDee Lamb was catching like 90% of these balls right here, Matt, let's see his catch percentage. Let me see his catch percentage compared to Amari Cooper. Let's get these up really quick. Um, career stats, we can bring up career stats, what they're doing this season. I just want to see this catch percentage right here because it's got to be low, folks. It's got to be low. Catch percentage this year by uh, CeeDee Lamb, it's 63%. Last year was 67%, so it's getting worse when you have an extra year. You know, CeeDee Lamb is still young, second year, so it's not, uh, it's not you know, urgent now, 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 but, you know, we, can, we need to start to see it a little bit more improving. So, uh, catch percentage is going down. Let me see what Amari Cooper is with um, uh, Dak Prescott, what his catch percentage is uh, quickly, because I would say it's probably like 70% catch percentage. Absolutely something magnificent. So, here we go with the Cowboys in 2019, his first official full year with the Cowboys. He had 66% catch percentage. Then the following year, it went up to 70. And then this year, it's 68%. And he's missed a couple of games. So... It's gotten better. It took a little bit of a hit this year because of, you know, him being out and inconsistent in the lineup. So it's going to go down a little bit, getting back, you know, missing a couple games. First game back, going to go down a little bit. But, I mean, it's going up. It's trajecting up with Amari Cooper, with, with CeeDee Lamb. It's going down. We've got to clean it up a little bit. And if they do, they, are, they can win the Super Bowl. They can win the Super Bowl if the connection between Dak Prescott and CeeDee Lamb is absolutely not it doesn't even need to be perfect. It just needs to be a uh, fifty percent better than what it is right now. We'll put the number on it. All righty, let's finish up these stats and then we'll shout out the Walk of Fame defense quickly here. Um, so here we go. Um, what else do we got? No, oh, I think that um, okay. Who was Dak Prescott throwing to? CD Lamb, seven catches, eighty nine yards. Dalton Schultz, their tight end, once again a great freaking. He's so great. He's so integral for this Cowboys offense, folks. Five targets, five catches, catch percentage, tight end university. Big shout out there. Dalton Schultz, five catches, forty three yards. Amari Cooper, two catches, forty one yards on two targets. Michael Gallup, five catches for thirty six yards and a touchdown, and he had that amazing back. Okay, let's watch that one. We got to watch this one because this was a great catch by Michael Gallup in the corner of the end zone. Uh, let me see if I can find this highlight quickly. Uh, right here. Um, right here. Right here. Right, right here. This toe tacking. Uh, I don't think this is. Nope. 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 Uh, you don't got this touchdown here by Michael Gallup on the highlight. 
Give me a second, folks. Scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. It's so gosh dang good. Dak Prescott throws a jump 50-50 ball back corner of the end zone. And man, oh man, Michael Gallup goes up and catches the ball absolutely magnificently right here. Oh, yes, right here. Let's watch this one one more time. Um, I don't know if you follow me on Twitter, but I live tweet. I don't like live tweeting during games, but I got suckered into it. And I, I tweeted, OMG, perfection, all caps. It was fantastic. But here we go. 0-0. Zero, zero game going to Michael Gallup here corner of the end zone Dak Prescott thrown the oh my god that's so cool Michael Gallup this is what we're saying this team is way too talented to have what what they got four losses four losses Way too talented for four losses. You've got three deep as heck wide receivers right here, folks. Michael Gallup. Oh, my God. The ball is thrown really well too high, and that's what you have to throw it at. High up. It's a jump ball. It's 50-50. It's high enough, and Michael Gallup high points it to perfection. Two feet down. Bingo, bango, man. Oh, man. Sheesh. Oh, my goodness. I mean, all these angles, I mean, it just gets better and better and better. Woo. Mmm. Mmm. Dak Prescott sees it immediately, throws it, no hesitation, one step drop, floats it up, bingo, bango, and that's a tug, baby. Sheesh, sheesh. Absolutely freaking magnificent, folks. Absolutely magnificent. All right, uh, last couple stats right here. We got Noah Brown, two catches, 14 yards, and Malik Turner, one catch for 10 yards. And then the Walk of Fame defense, folks. We had J. Ron Curse, an interception. We have DeMonte Kazee, an interception. We have Carlos Watkins, an interception. And obviously, if all those players are getting picks, you know Trayvon Diggs is like, oh, I'm going to get mines as well. One interception for Trayvon Diggs as well. For the sacks, Keanu Neal a sack. We have Michael Parsons a sack getting to the quarterback. Yes, sir. And let's quickly watch the Cowboys' best defensive plays right here. Once again, can't talk the Cowboys without talking the Walk of Fame defense, folks. Here we go. They just tried to hit a nice little screen right here, the Saints do. And here we go. Big old number 97 with the monster hit. Boom. Takes them down two yards behind the line of scrimmage. Walk of Fame defense. All young, rising, absolutely magnificent stars on this field. Next play in the backfield, easy peasy, five-yard loss on third and ten. And once again, I mean, what are we doing here? I mean, ran back-to-back -back screen plays right here. I think this is the opening drive right here for the Saints, not stretching the field vertically, going back-to-back -back screens. What are y'all doing, truly? What is this play calling? I don't understand it at all by the Saints. I was going crazy watching that first drive. Absolutely trash. Here we go in the backfield trying to run the ball. This is why they couldn't really run the ball and had to get away from it. The walk of fame defense bringing them two three yards in the backfield here it is again second and seven going absolutely nowhere maybe even a one yard loss and it's the entire defensive line getting into the action Taysom Hill scrolling to the right here throwing and it's almost intercepted by Trayvon Diggs he almost had two picks right here should have had two picks here we go Taysom Hill dropping back to passes here we go this interception this was a great pass here this was the pick the first one it's an interception by uh, uh, J. Ron Curse right here. And it's a great pick. Great job by the defense right there. Uh, still a good throw by Taysom Hill. Let's still reiterate that. But once again, walk of fame defense. They're ball hawks, baby. Here we go. Taysom Hill going to try and run with it. No, no, no. You're not running over this Cowboys defense. Shut that down. Right up the middle. No, thank you. Especially when you're not even, you know, stretching the field vertically. Of course not. All right, Taysom Hill, the play action pass, and man, oh man, they just rushed the man. Michael Parsons, man, this man is an absolute monster, folks, monster. Here he is just playing edge rusher, doesn't get fooled by Taysom Hill, and then just purely goes to attack the man, doesn't break down. This is what I love about this Cowboys defense. They just play so fast, and they trust their instincts, folks. They don't break down. I hate breaking down. I know it's textbook to break down and get them. No, no, no. They can juke you out. Just go. Go and make the hit, make the tackle. Obviously, don't miss, but you know, read it and maybe come from an angle so they can't kind of juke one way. Just play it. So, like Michael Parsons played right here, full speed, bring him down. Don't let him try to throw the ball away. If you break down, he can throw the ball away. Go and attack. And this is what the Cowboys defense does, folks. 
They just play so fast and loose right here. Knocking the ball out of Taysom Hill's hands. Fantastic all over the ball here, folks. What do we got up here? Uh, this is probably another interception. We're in the fourth quarter here. Taysom Hill. I mean, I don't know what the hell this. I don't know what the hell this was. He threw it uh, about ten yards short of where the wide receiver was, and that's an easy, easy pitch and catch right there for this Walk of Fame defense. You give this Walk of Fame defense any freebies, they're they're taking advantage 100%. Taysom Hill stepping up into the pocket and another pick right here. This is Trayvon Diggs getting the actual pick this time, making up for his drop. What else do we get? I think we get one more interception. We got to watch by Taysom Hill. A flag on the play, and this ball just... Uh... Oh my god, the edge rusher just reads it perfectly and he gets a pick six The dude gets a pick six right there on the defensive line Just reading Taysom Hill's eyes the entire way. We got Carlos Watkins on the pick six the big fella Everybody being ball hawks right here the corners the safeties and even the big men up front folks a complete walk of fame defense Holy moly so, Cowboys get the big old win here, 27-17. to Saints offense is still floundering. The Walk of, defense, Walk of Fame defense is just, whew, man, oh, man. This is a legit defense, folks. Man, oh, man, all over the ball. Shout out to Dan Quinn um, on the sideline, not in the booth, down on the field with the guys, and the defense is still absolutely fantastic, amazing, whatever you want to call it, perfection, pure perfection. It's very close, folks. Cowboys get the win 27 to 17 last night. All righty. All righty. Mm, all right. What do we want to do next, folks? Uh, we still got two film studies to watch, but I don't think we're going to be able to squeeze those in. So let's do our uh, picks, our official picks of the week. And then if we have any time, we will figure out what to do at that time. <laughs> so here we go. Let's go to our official picks this week. And, man, oh man, reminded of what we've got in the NBA. Man, oh man, so excited about this. Cavs plus three, 76ers plus a point and a half, Suns plus seven, folks. Man, oh man. Odds just went up. We are at plus 627. It was like 580 plus 590. So odds are going up, folks. Man, oh man, 76ers plus a point and a half now. What was it? Um, Was it uh, plus two? Is it going down? I'm, I might be going down a little bit. All right, but either way, folks, I'm loving it. Man, oh, man, that's absolutely fantastic. Um, all right, let's go to the NFL here, folks. All righty, our official Week 13 picks. We've already got a nice jump start on our Week 13 picks with the Cowboys minus six last night. Bingo, bango, they win by 10. That's the cover. That's the win. That is money, 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 folks. All righty, here we go. Our third Week 13 NFL picks, we do th uh, six picks. Three in our lock section. You can bet whatever you want on these. These are locks, folks. We have always hit all of our locks. They are locks. Three locks, bet whatever you want. Now, we have three 99% guarantees. Feeling so good about these picks as well. But potentially, maybe one thing that could potentially maybe hinder the bet. And it throws it off, but still feeling very, very good about it. Last week, our three locks were Bucks minus three and a half. They win by seven. Bingo, bango, folks. Then we had the Eagles minus three and a half. Eagles let us down a little bit. They were still driving the ball. They lose by six. We don't hit that one. Then we had the Texans minus two and a half, and uh, their offense is frauds a little bit. They lose by seven. Then we, our 99% guarantees, we had the Rams minus one. They are frauds. We know this. They lose by eight. The Vikings, we took them plus three. They are frauds. We understand this. They lost by eight. And the Chargers minus two and a half. They lose by 15. They are also frauds. So we got the frauds out of the way, folks, last week. So no more, fr no more frauds this week. We're ready to go for six for six. Are y'all ready to go six for six as well and hit some money this week? Let's get it going. Here we go. First pick in our lock section. And this line may have changed because a little bit of breaking news right here. So we'll see what the new line is. But the Giants, folks, are not going to have Daniel Jones this week. Officially ruled out for Sunday's game. Mike Glennon gets the start. So... When Daniel Jones was still in the game, I wrote down, you know, my picks before this news came in. It was Dolphins minus four and a half. That was our first official lock. Let's see what this line has risen to. I would assume it would probably go to Dolphins minus six, but let's see what we get. And we're still taking it. We're not going to not take it. It's Mike Glennon. Now they win by 50 instead of 45. It doesn't matter. Um, so here we go. Dolphins. Um, is this? Hang on. What? It's still only Dolphins minus four and a half. So Vegas knew kind of a little bit. The line doesn't change at all. Or are they, they already factored it in? Whatever way. It's, it's great value. Whatever way you slice it here. 
Dolphins minus four and a half, our first lock here of the week. This Dolphins defense is the real deal, folks. These last two, three games, absolutely getting it done. We're still trying to think of a defensive name here for the Dolphins. This defense has earned a nickname. We've got the Cowboys defense, the Walk of Fame defense. We've got the Patriots defense, the Provocateurs. Those two defenses have just been crushing it this entire season, and they've earned defensive nicknames. The Dolphins have really earned a defensive nickname. We just, we're just we just trying to come up with the perfect one, folks. Uh, give us your ideas. We're all ears here, and we're still trying to figure it out here. But we know this Dolphins defense is the real deal. Javon Holland is, oh my goodness, truly coming in. And I said it yesterday, or uh, on Sunday when I was watching the game that if it wasn't for really kind of Micah Parsons, Javon Holland would really kind of be the number one front runner of defensive rookie of the year. Uh, unfortunately, Javon Holland got on a little bit too late where Micah Parsons came off right off the rip in freaking preseason. Preseason, he was already a monster. Uh, so, of course, by week one, the man was absolutely fantastic. Uh, but this Dolphins defense is the real deal, folks. This Giants offense, it's nothing great. Last week, they uh, they won, but they only put up 13 points. Nothing really great. Uh, still not believing in Freddie Kitchens that, you know, week by week, it's going to get better and better and better and better. I don't see that by the Giants. They're on the road this week. Even more pressure on this Giants offense and defense. And here it is. Here it is. See, it just updated right now. Now they're taking into effect. Uh, and what is it? Minus six. Ex folks, we understand things. We are. We know what we're talking about here. We don't say wild things. We don't say things that aren't true. Most of the things that we say are really kind of on the nose or right around the nose area, folks. The line literally just moved because now they are taking into uh, consideration. Maybe Vegas had a little bit of a late morning. They woke up a little bit late, and then they checked their phone. They're like, oh my god, Daniel Jones is out. Change the line, change the line, change the line. Now Dolphins minus six, and we'll still take it. I don't give a damn. Vegas, make the official line. Vegas, make the official line. Are you right? Are you still listening, Vegas? They must be watching the show live. Obviously, they didn't even know Daniel Jones was out. They're watching the show live. They're moving the line lines on literally every single word we say it's already up to dolphins minus 20 now because we keep on talking we should shut our mouth no no exactly right we're not shutting our mouth make the official line dolphins minus 19 and a half that's the most you can buy it up to and once again we just said dolphins minus 20 is the new spread and now it's dolphins minus 19 and a half is the most you can buy it up at once again folks mm -mm -mm, whatever we say is right and it comes true i don't know what more y'all want from me what <laughs> what more do y'all want from me please Oh my god, they, oh my god, folks, I don't even know what the hell is happening anymore, they literally just increased it to the maximum that you can bet this game up of Dolphins minus 20, folks, what is happening here, Dolphins minus 21, that's what it should be, should I start saying things so it starts to appear, I don't even know what the hell is happening anymore, literally everything we say is happening right now. Now, this is the wildest three minutes in my entire career here, it takes by fans. This is... What? I'm Tim Allen? Man, oh man. Dolphins minus six, folks. That's, you want to get back to what we were saying before all this craziness happened? Dolphins minus six. Dolphins minus 20. It's the same thing. It doesn't matter. The Giants won't be able to score on this Dolphins team. Two has been looking great. I mean, we just went, talked about this game for five minutes, and so we didn't even bring up two in this offense yet. Sheesh. Um, uh, I got to take a breath, folks. Let me take a sip of water. I got to take a breath here, folks. I, this is crazy. Absolutely crazy. Man, oh, man. All righty. Back to the game here. Dolphins minus six, folks. Great bet. Fantastic bet. Great bet. Dolphins minus six. Official lock here. Defense is great. Giants offense won't be able to do any it won't be able to do anything. This Dolphins offense is getting better every single week. The offensive coordinators are finally figuring out how to win and what to do with this offense of the lackluster line and you know not having Devontae Parker. And I do think Devontae Parker is finally playing this game. Will Fuller is still not, but I do believe Devontae Parker is a good to go here for this Dolphins team. So Tua gets another weapon. Jalen Waddles truly just getting better and better, and they're utilizing him more 
more and more every single week. We get Philip Lindsay a full week under his belt here and already had his kind of, you know, uh, feet underneath him game last week, getting 12 rushes um, coming throughout the entire game. This Dolphins team is ready to rock. This is still a little bit of... Um, <clears throat> I know we said, I think I said yesterday it wasn't official disrespectful value, but I think it kind of is still, folks. Still, Vegas is not really respecting the Dolphins as much as they should. Dolphins minus six, absolutely loving it. Got it under the seven still. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Dolphins minus six, absolutely love it. First lock. Alrighty, now next game. Let's choose our words. <laughs> Should we choose our words carefully when we talk about the remaining five games? Maybe we can get more value if we talk about it a little bit differently. All right, here we go. Next pick in our lock section uh, here. Ravens minus four and a half, folks. Love it. This Steelers offense, it's nothing. They got absolutely obliterated last week by division rival Bengals. Ravens coming off of a really bad performance. Lamar Jackson, four interceptions. He put it all on himself, saying he needs to get better and all that. Uh, and the Ravens still won the game. Great job by that Ravens defense. All those turnovers by Lamar Jackson in the defense was never phased. Ever, ever phased. The Steelers defense isn't that great. It's a solid average maybe a hair above of average defense right here for the Steelers. But the Browns defense was really, really good, and the Ravens won that game still. So I'm expecting this Ravens offense to be better than what it was last week because they're facing a little bit of a, a, a worser, a little bit of a worser defense. Lamar Jackson should clean up those turnovers. He knows he can't really have two big bad games. I mean, people are already talking negatively about Lamar Jackson. Um, so he knows he has to kind of nip that in the bud a little bit. And we just can't buy this Steelers offense. That's really what it comes down to, folks. They can't move the ball anything consistently. They still haven't really established a great running game. Najee Harris is playing good. Uh, Big Ben's arm is going to get worse and worse every single game, every single play. And the offense was never great when Big Ben was, you know, fresh week one, two, three, four, five. It wasn't even great them. Uh, Ravens here on the road. I don't think it's going to be that much for them to overcome. Uh, Steelers, uh, it's, it's just the offense. It's honestly just the offense. I can't get behind it. Ravens minus four and a half. They clean up their act from last week. They get it done. We'll take the Ravens minus four and a half. All right, then our last pick in our lock section here. We're taking the Patriots plus three, folks. Patriots plus three here, Monday Night Football. I'm not buying Josh Allen, and I know that Bill Belichick is going to make it such a hard game for Josh Allen to pass. Bill Belichick, he obviously knows Josh Allen in the AFC. They they meet. And now, Bill Belichick, I'm sure, is comparing last year Josh Allen to this year Josh Allen and seeing where those cracks are starting to form or already have formed of why Josh Allen is not as good as he was last year. Bill Belichick is going to masterfully shut down Josh Allen. This Bills team doesn't have a running game, so Bill Belichick doesn't even have to worry about shutting down the run because they won't run and they can't run anyway. So that just gives Bill Belichick a more green light clearance to shut Shut down Josh Allen even more, folks. B uh, Bills at home is the best thing about it. This Bills defense is good, but now they're mo missing Tredavious White. Uh, Mac Jones... Hopefully this game doesn't get too big for them. That could potentially, uh, you know, be the reason why the Patriots do lose this game. If Mac Jones kind of, uh, you know, uh, tries to do a little bit too much, he has, he's really kept it together this entire season, folks. Playing excellent game managing football. Patriots are rolling. Bills are kind of floundering at the current moment. They haven't really beat any of the good teams. I mean, let's let's name the opponents that the Bills have won against this season and then have lost against this season. Do they have a signature big time win? I don't think they do, folks. Let's quickly double check right here. They're seven and four. Here we go. From week one to last week, they lost to the Steelers. And we know that was a really glaring bad loss in hindsight. That's a bad loss. They beat the Dolphins 35 to nothing. They had the Dolphins numbers. I will give them the respect for that. But the Dolphins weren't good in the beginning. We're not counting that as a quality win. They beat Washington. Not a quality win. They beat the Texans. Not a quality win. They beat the Chiefs. That was their quality signature win. It came in week five. 
Then they lose against the Titans. They beat the Dolphins again. They lose against the Jags. They beat the Jets. They lose against the Colts. They beat the Saints. I mean, they have one signature win, and it came in the first five games of the season, folks. What have you done for us lately? The Bills have not done anything for us lately. Give us the Patriots plus three. The defense will lock up Josh Allen, and Mac Jones will be free to do whatever he wants since the Bills defense a little bit worse for wear with Tredavious White out of the lineup here. So our three locks this week are Dolphins minus six, or if you want to do up to 20 now, you're welcome. You're welcome for that extra value. Dolphins minus 20. You're all welcome for that. <laughs> uh, Ravens minus four and a half in the Patriots my uh, plus three. All righty, now let's go to our 99% guarantee. Still feeling very, very strongly about these picks, but maybe potentially can see one thing that maybe hinders the bet. Potentially, possibly, maybe. So let's uh, hear them out. Here we go. First game in our 99% guarantees. And, you know, we said this is a crazy... We, we just did not expect this from Vegas. We really don't see a lot of respect given out by Vegas, really, at all. Um, I mean, Daniel Jones goes out and it's only a point and a half. I mean, ooh, okay. <coughs> but, um, yeah, we don't really see Vegas giving any teams big respect. And we saw kind of big respect yesterday when we predicted and reacted to the lines right here. And we think it's a little bit of a sucker bet, so we have to take it the other way here. We're taking the Eagles minus seven right here. We thought respectful value for this game would be Eagles minus three, even Eagles minus three. Four, even like the top, the most that I would kind of say would be Eagles minus five on the road. But Vegas goes Eagles minus seven. I think they're playing the line right here. I think they're playing us, the the betters. Yeah, we're the we are the consumers. We are the betters. I think Vegas is trying to take advantage of us a little bit here, folks. Um, and it's on the side of Jets plus seven. Jets coming off of a win against the Texans, though. Nothing great there. Zach Wilson's first game win. Big in the media. Big optically. But against the Texans, folks. Then the Eagles last week. Eagles lose against the Giants. That goes for plus seven with the Jets. But overall, the Eagles were still moving the ball. And it was just Jalen Hurts' boneheaded plays in the red zone. And Jalen Rager not catching the ball at the end of the game. We broke that game down. We watched it. We saw it. The, the final score was not truly the overall picture of what happened in that Eagles-Giants game. But optically... It's not a good loss, and I understand that. And Vegas, I think, is playing the game, all the optics games, and giving the Jets plus seven. I'm going Eagles minus seven here. The defense is solid. They can shut down and lock up Zach Wilson. This Eagles offense has really figured it out over the last kind of four, five, six weeks, just besides last week took a little bit of a toll. Division uh, rival on the road. Just unfortunately, you had those days at the offense. We're giving the Eagles a little bit of a free pass. Not a whole free pass, a little free pass. So I'm taking the Eagles minus seven right here, folks. Not buying into the Jets right here. The way that Vegas set this value, I have to take the Eagles minus seven right here. Um, I think they're trying to get everybody with the Jets plus seven. This is why the Jets plus seven is minus 115 and Eagles minus seven is 105 because y'all are betting the Jets plus seven. This line could potentially move up to Jets minus six and a half. And that tells you that everybody is eating up that value uh, that Vegas is trying to force on you of Jets plus seven. So I'm taking the Eagles minus six. A little bit of a hiccup last week. They get back on track. The offense is fine, folks. They had a bad outing. Overall, they were still moving the ball consistently the entire game against the Giants. They'll be able to do the same thing here. The same thing here. In New York, they're already there. Basically, they were in New York for the Giants game. They're in New York for the Jets game. I'm sure they didn't even go back to Philadelphia this week. Eagles minus seven is the right play here, folks. Eagles minus seven. 
Alrighty, next game in our 99% guarantees, we are going Colts minus 9.5. Now, we don't buy this Colts team. We don't think this Colts team is going to get to the Super Bowl. I don't even know if they get into the playoffs, folks. Honestly, I'm being honest here, folks. I don't know if they get that wild card spot. We'll see. We'll see. They still got time. We'll see. Uh, but I'm not buying this Colts team. They throw the ball way too much, but this is a good thing now. This is actually the good thing because this is what the Texans give up. They Their defense is trash on the deep ball. They give up the deep ball. That's their kind of kryptonite, if you will, and the Colts will be able to truly take advantage. Frank Reich loves throwing <clears throat> with Carson Wentz, uh, loves to give Carson Wentz all the credit of why this Colts team is having success, and then that's just going to open up the running game. Uh, so the Col the Texans may just be focused on the running game, going to open up the passing game even more, but if the passing game is just going off without a hitch like it should, the running game will obviously be able to go as well. Tyrod Taylor can't get it done by himself. There is no threatening piece on this Texans offense besides Tyrod Taylor's legs. That's really all it is. Brandon Cooks is really good offensively, wide receiver piece for the Texans, but that's really all they have. They don't run the ball. This Colts defense is a solid defense, above average defense in this league. They forced a couple of turnovers the last couple of weeks. They've had the lead the last couple of weeks, squandered it sometimes uh, because of the offense, unfortunate. But this Texans team, they won't threaten this Colts defense. They'll get a couple of takeaways. They'll control the game. And they've already faced this season because they are division rivals. And in the first meeting, it was Colts won the game. The Colts were at home. We get it. But they still Still won the game 31 to 3. Non competitive. I expect the same type of score here. Blowout game for the Colts. We'll swallow the nine and a half. All right, our last pick and our 99% guarantees and our last pick of the week here, we are going Bengals minus three, folks. Not truly buying this Chargers defense. And these these two defenses are similar here between the Chargers and the Bengals, but, but the Bengals don't let you score while the Chargers let you score. Here we go, Bengals. They have given up defensively 200. 126 points so far this season. The Chargers have given up 293. So about 70 more points given up by the Chargers than the Bengals, but they've both given up 3,800 yards offensively. So same amount of yards given up, but the Bengals lock it up. They don't let you score with the red zone takeaways. They force you to settle for three instead of seven, where with the Chargers, it's like, all right, you can score on us, no problem. The Chargers like you to score on them so they can in turn throw the deep ball and try to keep up pace scoring wise. That's what the Chargers like to do. The league average of points given up so far this season is 260. So, you know, Chargers giving up more and the Bengals giving up less. So, same amount of yards given up, but the Chargers have given up 70 more points, folks. Um, this Bengals team, they're at home. Joe Burrow's looking great. The offense here is looking great. This Bengals team just had a magnificent performance last week against division rival Steelers. And this Chargers team kind of got exposed last week. And this Chargers team, they're just kind of a pure drop back team. They are starting to kind of use Austin Eckler a little bit more in the running and passing game, which kind of helps kind of, uh, you know, break up just the pure drop back because Justin Herbert's a pure drop back passer. We've got Mike Williams and Keelan Allen. I mean, those are just kind of two stand-up, 6'2-plus tall receivers that just go deep. Uh, they don't have any gadget players on this Chargers really kind of offense. And the Bengals, I believe, can shut that offense down that the Chargers have. Uh, Chargers, a little bit of streaky as of late. Uh, not 100% buying into. We just kind of labeled them frauds last week, unfortunate. So, I'm taking the Bengals minus three. They're at home. Bengals offense can move it, and this Bengals defense is just getting better every single week right here. Joe Mixon, shout out to A1 Tier 1 running back. Get it done. We're taking the Bengals minus three. So, our three 99%, we're going to Eagles minus seven, Colts minus nine and a half, and the Bengals minus three. So, all of our picks this week, we've got Dolphins minus six now, uh, Ravens minus four and a half, Patriots plus three, Eagles minus seven. Colts minus nine and a half in the Bengals minus three, folks. Going six for six. We've got our finger on the pulse in the NFL, folks. We are ready to hit six for six for the rest of the year, folks. Jump on. Make some money at the back end of the season. We finally figured out the NFL, folks, and we're cashing in this week.
All righty. That is going to do it for us today, folks. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. We are back live tomorrow, noon Eastern. We're going to be setting bars for teams this week. A lot of people got frauds, exposed as frauds last week, and we're going to give them a chance, a path to be labeled not frauds in our eyes by reaching a little bit of a higher set bar. So we'll set those bars tomorrow on the show. Uh, we'll do our NBA Daily 10. Uh, what else do we got tomorrow? Oh, we'll probably play around with Pro Bowl voting as well. That is coming up. I think uh, voting ends in like two weeks. So we'll start uh, looking at some Pro Bowl voting and see if we can kind of set some bars for some Pro Bowl players outside looking in for our vote. We'll do all that tomorrow on the show, noon Eastern, folks. Alrighty, anything last second breaking news here? Um, oh, a, a duck with a goose. Duck with a duck? I kind of like this picture. It's not sports related, but I kind of like this. Duck with a duck. Big rubber ducky in the pond and a duck, actual duck in land. They kind of swapped positions there, folks. Bow tie with the duck, too. Um, all right. That is going to do it for us today, folks. Delvin Cook ruled out for Sunday's game against Detroit. That line change at all? What do we got with the Vikings? Vikings still minus seven? They are still minus seven. Interesting. All righty. That seems to be it. Oh, so we get Alexander Madison? Ooh. Oh, yeah. I might take the Vikings. We might do a bonus bet tomorrow. Let me sleep on that. Vikings minus seven with Alexander Madison in the backfield? Give me that. Oh, yeah. We love Alexander Madison here, folks. All righty, folks. That is going to do it for us today. Back live tomorrow, noon Eastern. Eagles coach Nick Sirianni says Jalen Hurts is questionable. Oh, no. It is unknown right now. Okay. We've got to keep an eye on this Jalen Hurts news. Hopefully he's good to go. If he's not good to go, I don't know if we do the Eagles minus seven. Man, oh, man. All right. But Eagles minus seven without Jalen Hurts? Uh, I don't see that happening. I don't see that. I don't think that's what the spread would be. If Jalen Hurts wasn't playing, I'd say Eagles minus three. Like, yeah, so. All righty, folks. Now we are out of here, I think. I think, unless we see anything else breaking here, I think we're good. All right. Now, officially, we are out of here. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. We are back live tomorrow, noon Eastern. Make some money this week in the NBA. Oh, tonight in the NBA. Make some money this week in the NFL picks. Man, oh, man, feeling good. We're making cash, folks. Cash is coming in. It's the holidays, folks. Cash is coming in. All righty, folks. We are out of here.